I'm going to bring in now Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee. He sits on the Judiciary Committee and introduced articles of impeachment in November of 2017. Congressman, I want to get your reaction first on what Kellyanne Conway just said. Is the president willing to make a deal? The president will make a deal on anything, but he won't keep a deal. You know, he said he would be proud to have the mantle of the shutdown and wouldn't blame the Democrats. Now he's blaming the Democrats. Before that, he agreed to a uh, $1.3 million for border security that was in a bill that the Senate passed unanimously, and then he turned away from it when Rush Limbaugh, his, uh, his mental uh, and, and intellectual guide, told him not to, and uh, Laura Ingram. So the problem is, you know, he doesn't tell the truth, he doesn't keep a deal, and her comments about Nancy Pelosi being in Hawaii, how disingenuous when she, the president goes to Mar-a-Lago every chance he can on the taxpayers dime and and speaker elect Pelosi uh, is in Hawaii on her own on her own money and her own time with her family do you understand the optics of that sir this is now uh, on this day of the government shutdown that Nancy Pelosi is in Hawaii the president is there again tweeting um, it, what do you think of the optics of that in in essence for those who say you know what he's ready to make a deal maybe they should be headed back at least physically uh, symbolically being there to show that they're ready for a deal I think you have to make a deal with Rush Limbaugh and, and Laura Ingram. That's who he listens to, and he won't agree to a deal unless they agree to it. Uh, you know, the optics of Hawaii aren't great, but Hawaii is the United States of America. It's a great state, and she's in America, and she's in one of our, our, one of our 50 states. All right, I want to ask you and shift now when it comes to um, Kellyanne Conway this morning defending the president's decision to lay the blame for the deaths of those two migrant children um, and blame the Democrats. What do you make of that? Well, that's absurd. They would have left the oppression and the lack of opportunity that they had in Guatemala, whether there was a border security or not. And they came up, they should have been, uh, had healthy facilities. I don't know that the child that most recently died, I read, had the flu. And a better response would have been that the flu kills tens of thousands of people every year. People don't realize how deadly the flu can be and is, and that people should get vaccinated. But the problem is they've bellied up to the anti-vaxxers and they're afraid to tell the American public, get your children vaccinated. This is the reason why this child died. They could have done that and maybe saved some American children's lives. But instead, they're in bed with the anti-vaxxers and want to attack the Democrats and are afraid to face the truth about possibly what caused the child's death. All right, sir, I want to turn now uh, to this poll and get your take on it. It's a new poll that shows 47 percent hold President Trump responsible for, for this shutdown, with 33 percent blaming Democrats in Congress. So do the numbers in, in that Democrats less inclined to cut a deal with the White House when it comes to this border wall? Is, is the public laying the blame with the president so the Democrats can just hold out? I don't know about the poll, but the fact is we we're, we're, do have two different uh, uh, focus groups in this country. Uh, President Trump's focus group is his base 35, give or take, percent that keeps uh, him in solid with the Republicans in the Senate who are his defenders in case he's impeached and can keep him in office. I think he's concerned about being impeached. I think he wants to keep the senators supporting him and being uh, uh, having their base, which is his base, uh, supportive and, and, and deluded by the uh, constant lies that he puts out uh, through Fox News and through other sources, his tweets. And he's looking to them, and the Democrats are looking to another group, which is not just Democrats, but responsible Republicans. Maybe they're called Rockefeller Republicans. Maybe they're called, uh, you know, woke Republicans, who realize that this president is causing uh, a cancer on the American system, that the presidency has a cancer upon it, and therefore there's a cancer on our government and our republic. And we can't have, just as General Stanley McChrystal said today, he wouldn't work for this president if he offered a job because he don't, likes to work for people who are honest. This man is not honest, and there is a real problem with the country and the people not having faith in their government and, and so, respecting the truth. Congressman, let's talk about the work at hand here. You have said that the shutdown will not get in the way of investigations. So what is the priority for you and your colleagues when you take control next week? Our priorities are what they were during the campaign, and that is providing uh, Americans with health care, that if they have pre-existing conditions, they can continue to get insurance, that prescription drug prices come down, that insurance and health care is available to people, that we create jobs through an infrastructure bill, and that we get into the culture of corruption that we've seen with Secretaries Price and Zinke and, and uh, who have all left under shame and others from this administration. This is the most uh, 
um, ethically challenged administration since, uh, I, I guess, since, I don't know, maybe ever. Uh, it's a, a, they're, they're terribly ethically challenged. And we're going to kind of, but we're also going to look into this president. And the American public wanted a check and balance on President Trump. And we're going to have uh, hearings which have not gone on in the last two years. One of the most important functions of Congress is oversight. Yep. And the Republicans did not engage in oversight. Instead, they were stuck on uh, uh, emails and, and, and Anthony Weiner's laptop. They, they should have been looking at what was in their face. Instead, Nunez right. ran to the White House and good lad, and they did everything but oversee uh, what I'm going to say will be the most corrupt administration known to this government. What are you going country. to look at first when it comes to you ran down your priorities as far as getting down the business uh, at the start of the year and you take over? But also, now with these investigations, what are you going to focus on first and also how will you manage it so that none of the other priorities get watered down from it? Well, we've got many, many committees in Congress and they each look at different things. My prime committee is judiciary and my other committee is, is transportation. On judiciary, I'll be on the Constitution, Civil Rights and Civil Liberties uh, subcommittee and more likely than not be the chair. And Chairman Nadler and, and will have a lot to do with what we get engaged in there. We work as a team, but I mm -hmm. think the Monuments Clause will be one of the first things we look at. Okay. And the President's violating the Constitution, not coming to Congress. We'll look at the pardon power and we'll look at uh, voting rights and try right. to see that people have a right to vote in this country. Steve Cohen, Tennessee, thank you.